Hello and welcome to Camera Review. Today we have a very important announcement. Tamron just released their new 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Actually, it has not been officially announced, but the announcement is coming this week and it is a very important lens because they have had a lot of following with their past lenses, especially the one that's 70 to 200 millimeter and the 15 to 30 millimeters. These two lenses that just came out in the last year or so have been a phenomenal success. But we're thinking about the 24 to 70 millimeters from the previous generation. It had a lot of issues, especially with the build quality. It had issues with uh, problems with the, the focusing, the, the manual focusing, especially. They had issues with that. And this lens that has just been upgraded is supposed to be sharper and better. And when we look at the older lens, it was had 17 elements in 12 groups. And now we're looking at this lens and seeing how can it be improved upon? Because if you looked at the previous lens, it had some certain characteristics that was good, but it lacked some of the potential that it had when it comes to performance in terms of bokeh and the color renditioning. And also, it, there was a lot of talk about the sharpness. Sharpness had not been in the par with the new lenses that have come out with it from Nikon and Canon. So if you are to compare what this lens is providing and what Sigma has just announced, the 24 to 70, and when you compare these lenses, we're seeing a big improvement in lens quality, delivering of speed, so VR, which is a vibration reduction in Canon terms, or the Tamron, as they call it, vibration control. So what does that do? What does it bring to the table? First of all, right off the bat, they're going to cost half the price of what the Nikon is selling for. So you're going to have a much better price. The previous lens was priced at $1,299, so $1,300, versus what, the, what Nikon is selling in this $24, $2,500 range. So what we are seeing is the price range is going to be a lot lower. It's at least going to be a grand cheaper. And the quality as far as the optics is going to be stellar. First of all, they have improved in the lens coatings. They had low dispersion lens coatings. They had extra low dispersion lens coatings. And these had improved the chromatic aberration. Now, chromatic aberration that was an issue before uh, has been virtually eliminated in the 70 to 200 millimeter range. And I think that they're going to put the same kind of coatings on the 24 to 70 millimeters. So what we'll have is a very low chromatic aberration. We're going to have less distortion and we're going to have incredible sharpness. Now, sharpness wise, it's going to be on par with the Nikon and Sigma. Sigma and Tamron are probably going to be head to head and Nikon following a close second. Now, what will happen, the difference between a Nikon and a Tamron will be the center versus the edge sharpness. Center and edge sharpness that we have seen in the other lenses that came out from Tamron, the 70 to 215 to 30 millimeter, is that they are on par. So there's an evenness in the amount of sharpness you get from the center and the edges. So that means they have improved the optical design, they improved on the optical quality so we are going to see a lot of sharpness now the sharpness does not actually mean that it's a great lens sharpness is only one of the factors that determines what the lens is going to give you we have to look at the bokeh we have to look at the fall off what i mean is the in focus area versus the out of focus area if there's a sharp drop you'll see that 3d pop that you will have with some of the lenses that we have seen on the top range, like the 50 to uh, 85 millimeter range. So the 50 millimeters, the 85 millimeters had this kind of pop because they could separate the background because of the aperture openings. Now we had not seen so much so in the 24 to 70 millimeters because of the f2.8, which is the maximum aperture we could get. 
Now, again, we're looking at Canon and Nikon and every lens manufacturer out there, and we're seeing that the maximum aperture they want to make is f2.8 because the size is going to go tremendously big if you go to f2 or f1.8. And that is an issue that has been uh, part of the reasons why people have been accepting the f2.8. The difference that it makes is whether it has vibration reduction because that is going to give you a one-stop or a two-stop advantage so you can dial down the shutter speed and still get that sharp focus especially when you're a wedding photographer because wedding photographers use the 24 to 70 millimeters often and that is because that is it gives you the ability the focal range to change uh, whether you're shooting somebody close by or you're having somebody in portrait or if somebody is in a group. So it gives you from the wide angle to uh, more of a uh, portrait type of photography. And in when the low light circumstances happen, if the light is going down, if it's at night or if the place is not lit well, that is going to give you that advantage. It is for that reason, those lenses that do not have a good vibration reduction are going to be out of the market. So speaking of that, I think the Tamron is going to be a stellar performer. It's going to probably give you two to three uh, stops of advantage. If you're shooting at f2.8, it's like shooting at f1.4 because you're getting one or two stops advantage right off the bat. But that's not the only thing that is important. What's important is if you're using this lens and the performance is there and the quality is there, you're not going to have as many issues of whether you want to go from a Nikon lens to a Tamron lens and save a thousand bucks or twelve hundred dollars and buy another lens. So that is going to give you that advantage. The problem that has been, if you look at the previous version of the 24 to 70 millimeter lens, is that they didn't have a beautiful uh, silky smooth focus style. So that is an issue because you realize that if a lens is good, usually that focus style is cared upon and that is one thing that has been bothering me because if it does not have that, it means the quality has not been put in there. It's the design, the little details that make all the difference. That's why Zeiss lenses have had that beautiful focus dial. It has that beautiful aperture ring and that means you are going to get incredibly smooth transitions between the shots so if you're going click click and it's too fast you're not going to able to nail that focus if you're using it a manual a lot of professional photographers even though they use this these lenses in autofocus they still need to dial between the 24 to 70 millimeter the focal length so if that is not smooth it's not going to give you that beautiful feel and that beautiful feel gives you that smooth motion from going one focal length to another. For me, that is critical. And for that reason, I think Tamron needs to do a big change. And I hope that they have done that change. If they have not done, a lot of professionals will still say, this is my bread and butter. I'm going to buy the more expensive lens and pay the thousand dollar difference. Now, if you're an amateur and you don't care about whether it is a smooth operation that is not, that it is a mechanically well built, then by all means, Tamron is going to give you a lot of sharpness, it's going to give you a lot of contrast, it's going to give you beautiful images. More so probably than what Nikon is in terms of the MTF charts. But what will determine at the end of the day, whether you're going to spend more and get a lens that is like Nikon or Canon versus what you will get with Tamron, is that the Tamron is going to be for those amateurs that want to use these lenses and get that extra sharp shot. But if it comes down to the mechanical issues, then it will be a big problem. So I'm hoping that the, the Tamron group has been able to resolve these smooth transitions. And secondly, they have had issues with the quality and build. People have complained to me often that if they drop the lens or they bang it, that the, the mechanics in it does not work. They have had issues when the motors had failed from the autofocus. They have had issues with the alignment of lenses. These were quality issues. And I think Tamron has been working very hard to improve on those factors. 
especially if you consider their newer lenses, the 15 to 30 millimeter, the 70 to 200 millimeter, those lenses show a lot more improvement in quality than the previous versions, especially considering from the price range. So they've gone up in quality and kept their prices relatively low. So that is one of my takes on the 24 to 70. Now, one thing that I would like to mention is that they, Tamron is not the only one in the market that is coming out a new lens that is 24 to 70. Sigma came out and Sigma's lens is phenomenal. The sharpness is there, the quality is there. Of course, they are the R series, so they put their emphasis on making that the optics are, are as good as the Canon and Nikon or even better. So Tamron, on the other hand, is specifically targeting those uh, consumers that don't want to pay the high price, the Nikon, Canon prices, but still want that quality. And for that, they're getting the sharpness, they're getting the bouquet. So we are hoping that this is going to push Nikon and Canon to lower their prices and bring better products into the market, especially considering what uh, Nikon has been doing, they're going up to $2,400 price range. Now, we want to see the lenses drop to $1,800 or $1,700, making it more affordable. So the difference should not be twice the price. It should be $500 to $600 more. Because remember, Nikon's dial is not as smooth. It's still the plasticky feel. And that plasticky feel is not what uh, professionals like because what happens is it's too light it's not dampened and it just turns in a way that is not uh, what a professional product should be so in that respect uh, Zeiss still holds the, uh, the, the lead on it uh, if you look at what Leica has they still have that beautiful dampening and we want to see that dampening we want to see the better construction in all lenses, including Nikon, including Canon, including Sigma. And Sigma, for one thing, they have had tremendous issues in the past with quality, but they have improved in the quality so much so that their lenses is now on par with Nikon's and Canon's. And Nikon has made the mistake of taking all their professional lenses almost exclusively out of the market and producing only some of the lenses in Japan and the other lenses in Thailand and China, especially Chinese quality, they are very bad. They are those lenses, they look so plasticky. I would rather use a lens that was made uh, 20, 25 years ago and get that image quality and that beautiful rendition of bokeh than go with these cheaper lenses. And these cheaper lenses, they're still charging over $1,000. And you can buy a quality lens for 150 to 200 dollars that's used so we don't want to see a lens where we buy and then the price drops by half within a year or year and a half we want to buy a lens and use it and see the price remain relatively stable at uh, maybe a 15 to 20 percent drop now the good thing about tamrons is you're paying 1300 dollars you're gonna be able to sell that lens maybe $800 to $750 range within a year and a half to two years. So your only loss is about what three four hundred dollars versus a loss of maybe a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars. That's a big drop. So that's something to consider. Having said that, one thing that I would like to suggest to you is before you try out these lenses, before you go and buy them make sure you look at these photos, the photos from the Nikon, look at the photos from Canon, look at the photos from Sigma, and then look at the photos that have come out from Tamron. We're gonna be testing out the Tamron, it's on its way, and we are gonna make sure that those images match at least the quality that we get from the Nikon. And before we go and purchase another lens, I would suggest to you that you also look at those images and those images speak for you because you're gonna see a lot of differences in the color renditioning. And although the sharpness will be there, your end of the day question will be whether this lens is going to deliver the kind of images that you like, the colors. And I know that some people have been in love with the colors from Canon, some people have been in love with the colors from Sigma. And I think Tamron has their own unique area of expertise in bringing certain highlights, certain uh, depth into their images. So that is something to consider. 
Now, second question is whether the price range is going to be within your budget. I, I'm always up for spending a little more to get a little bit more quality. Now, the optics, as I said, will be on par probably with Nikon and Canon. What is important is the mechanical build. If the mechanical build is not there, you are going to have to replace that lens or send it for repair. In the end, it will cost more if the dampening is not there, if the aperture dial or the focus dials on all lenses I'm talking about are, are not beautifully built. Now, the, uh, we know that the focus dial and the uh, focal range dial is going to be something that is going to be better than of their previous generation lenses but this is the lens we are talking about this is the one we should be looking at now if you are already owner of tamrons if you have already bought the 15 to 30 if you have already bought the 7 to 200 this is a beautiful addition because you're not going to have changes in quality between one image to the other so if you have shot images with the 70 millimeter and you go to use the 24 to 70 and you shoot the same image with this uh, with a 70 millimeter focal length you're going to get equal looks you're going to have equal uh, um, renditions of bokeh you're going to have equal renditions of color so if you are for example a wedding photographer and you give this to the client client is not going to say wow this looks so good one why this looks a little different or the why the skin tones are different from this image and that image so if you're going to do that you have to make sure that your images are in similar way and you give the client the same kind of image quality and the same kind of skin tone rendition and that of course will mean that if you have use use different types of lenses that you might have to make adjustments in the lightroom to compensate for that if you haven't done so and you are someone who likes to travel, who likes to take photographs and loves to use the 24 to 70 millimeters, by all means, you can go ahead and purchase this lens. I provided links down below in the description section below that tells you about these lens uh, best prices where you can get them and also some places where you can get additional information on these lenses. So please check those out. And if you like this review, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel because I know I'm going to be bringing you a lot more reviews, especially in comparison between the Canons and the Nikons and also the newer lenses that are coming up, the pipeline. And of course, you can visit our website at camerareview.ca where I provide you with links and information on how to get the best prices and all equipment that you may be looking for. And there's also the in-depth articles that we will be publishing on that website. So I thank you for watching and I see you next week.